this week we are starting a new book and that book is I Was Told There'd Be Cake by Sloane Crosley. I should be on HSN. So first, a little bit about the author. Sloane Crosley is a writer living in New York City and she has written for Salon and the New York Times and The Village Voice and according to the back of her book, she wrote the cover story for the worst selling issue of Maxim in the magazine's history. <laughs> wow. So she obviously has a sense of humor. Now I know that a lot of people in the general public don't know much about Sloane Crosley. I didn't really either until a few years ago. But to me, she has always seemed like one of those people who is well known in New York, so is therefore well known everywhere. And if I had to compare it, I would compare it to kind of like the level of fame that Carrie Bradshaw seemed to have in Sex and the City, although I would probably stop the comparisons right there because I don't really know how good of a writer Carrie Bradshaw was. I'm just comparing the amount of perceived fame. Anyway, this book is a New York Times bestseller and it came out in 2008, so if you read it back then, you are due to read it again. And it's not a very lengthy book, so it should fit into your schedule quite nicely. Also, it is a collection of humor essays, so I don't think that it is going to be in chronological order, but I guess we will be finding that out together. I initially picked up this book because Goodreads.com recommended it to me based on some other books that I had also highly rated, humor books. And during my last semester of college last year, we were supposed to assign ourselves a book to read and I chose this one for myself. However, obviously I was a sneaky snake and I did not read the book. I think I read one chapter near the beginning and one near the end so that when I wrote my paper on it, it looked like I had read a large section of the book. Teaching you how to cheat here, kiddos. So, I'm sorry if my professor ever sees this video. She was one of my favorite professors ever, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to maintain your sanity in college, and I had a German test coming up, and I was working three jobs. However, the chapters that I did read out of this book, I remember really enjoying, and I would probably describe them as a mix between Ginny Lawson, who we read last, and also David Sedaris. I don't remember Sloane Crosley's writing being quite as excitable of a personality as Ginny Lawson, but I also don't remember it quite being as astute I don't know if I'm using the right word there, or maybe as formal as David Steris is writing. And as usual, we will be splitting this book into four sections. So next week, read the first four chapters from The Pony Problem to Bring Your Machete to Work Day. Also, pay close attention to the author's note because I read it and it, it seems like it would be very interesting to discuss. This week, let me know if you know anything about Sloane Crosley or maybe you have read her before. And definitely let me know if you will be reading this book with the club. So read up and I will see you guys Wednesday.